Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. This week on the Better, Brighter You segment brought to you by Suspera, we're unpacking something that many of us, well, especially those who split time between the Northeast and the Sunshine State, don't talk about enough. Geography's impact on your skin. Joining me is board-certified dermatologist, Dr. Leslie Clark Loser, a South Florida native and founder of Precision Skin and Body Institute. She has a background that includes George Washington University, NYU Medical School, and a specialized dermatopharmacology fellowship. Dr. Clark brings over two decades of clinical experience. She's led more than 30 clinical trials, launched community-driven skin healing initiatives, and has a deep understanding of how UV exposure shapes aging. Today, we're chatting sun, skin, and secrets, how Florida's heat is accelerating aging and what you can actually do about it. Welcome to the show, Superstar. Hi, how are you? I'm great. So a staggering 90% of visible skin aging is attributed to sun exposure, and this is according to the Skin Cancer Foundation. But sun damage isn't just about wrinkles or spots. It can influence everything from collagen loss to pigmentation changes, which leads me to... When you treat patients for age-related aesthetics, how does hyperpigmentation fit into the equation? I mean, it's a it's really a, a part of it. It's part of this bigger picture that you describe, wrinkling, change in skin elasticity. But hyperpigmentation for most individuals um, and how the pigment is changing is lying in the background. And it's something that you are going to assess and really look at your options in terms of treating. And I think anything that we've, or if there's anything we've learned over time, it's how you benefit from approaching things like hyperpigmentation or just photo aging in general from multiple angles and with multiple modalities. You're always going to win if you employ different ways of addressing an issue. And hyperpigmentation is definitely no different. And looking at your toolbox and what you can use to really optimize outcomes is going to best serve you as a doctor and then patients obviously will benefit. Now, practicing dermatology in a high UV climate like Florida must bring a unique set of challenges. When we look at the studies, a study in the JAMA Dermatology revealed that residents in sun-intense geographies have higher rates of actinic damage as early as age 30. I mean, how does being a dermatologist in Florida shape your practice? Is geography, like especially sun intensity, shaping your patient population in a specific way? Absolutely, Zen. You know, it doesn't surprise me. I hadn't heard that statistic. So I really think that's interesting. At least these residents are getting outside, not that we want them to have actinic damage. But, you know, being in South Florida, there's a few things that do impact issues of pigmentation in a practice down here. One of which is the obvious is that people are spending time outside more of the year than they are probably anywhere else that isn't similar in climate. So they are engaging in outdoor activities all year round, walking, biking, pickleball now. You you name it, they're doing it outdoors for longer periods of time. So we do see that type of photo damage and hyperpigmentation related to that. But Added to that, South Florida is a melting pot, Um, you know, not so dissimilar than to New York City, but we have ethnicities that really span the globe here in South Florida. And so we also take that into account in terms of, you know, different issues of pigmentation. We see melasma, you know, more often in different ethnicities than we do in others. And then those that maybe have more Northern European, Western European um, skin that's a lot fairer. We see different issues in those individuals, maybe less melasma, but more of this really sun-induced photoaging. So different types of hyperpigmentation. The good news is that your toolbox, whether it's an energy-based device, whether you're using chemical peels or topical applications, they can really serve most of these issues or even oral medications in you know, the case of melasma or other types of hyperpigmentation. Yeah. So climate literally dictates protocol. It's wild to think that our zip code plays such a big role in our skin trajectory. Yeah. <laughs> now let's zoom in on a, uh, on a question a lot of patients don't think to ask. Is their uneven skin tone actually hyperpigmentation, right? So do you consider uneven skin tone a form of hyperpigmentation and are there subtypes patients should be aware of? Yeah. I mean, when we think about pigment, 
right? It's pigment is from our melanocytes. Our melanocytes are producing melanin. And we have two different types of melanin. We have our eumelanin, and that's our darker, browner, sometimes black pigment. And then we have our pheomelanin, which is more this kind of reddish, lighter brown to yellow pigment. And the combination of those pheo and eumelanin is what dictates what our pigmentation looks like. And it's not always even. So that kind of uneven hyperpigmentation that occurs over time with photo aging is really, you know, you're seeing kind of this, you know, deposits of different type of pigmentation. Maybe it's favoring more the production of this darker pigment and less of the lighter pigment. So yeah, that type of hyperpigmentation that you see during photo aging is, you know, it's an issue of hyperpigmentation, I guess, or pigmentation. So you can address that um, as you would other types of pigmentation. You might utilize things for a longer period of time, a shorter period of time, depending on why that hyperpigmentation is there. I guess a good example might be that sometimes you can see hyperpigmentation after maybe an injury. So I think the simplest one is we all, you know, on occasion um, inadvertently burn ourselves with the oven or a curling iron and when that heals, it can leave behind some evidence. It's not a true scar, but it's pigmentation that's hyperpigmentation from that injury. And you can treat that. And you can treat that with a topical. You can treat it with energy-based devices. But the length of time that you might treat it is going to be different. Um, and how hard it is to treat might be different than it is something like melasma or photoaging hyperpigmentation. And those things oftentimes require longer-term chronic use. Right. I love that breakdown, especially the nuance. Not all dark spots are created equal and treatment should reflect that. Right. Now, when it comes to treating sun damage, especially in aging patients, you often see a cocktail of concerns, solar lentigenes, melasma, post-inflammatory pigmentation. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. But Cyspera is one of the few agents on the market clinically shown to improve both solar and senile lentigenes with out causing hypo, the hypopigmentation or rebound effects. When, when treating sun-related damage, what do you prioritize when choosing treatments and products? Is diagnosis often straightforward or are you usually managing multi or overlapping conditions? Yeah, you bring up a good point. Oftentimes there's multiple issues that are overlapping one another. And, you know, for example, you bring up, you know, what you would use as a topical. You know, a product like Cispera, which is a topical cysteine, which is in fact a very, you know, potent antioxidant. You know, we we make our own cysteine. This is just a formulated cysteine. When I talk to my patients about, you know, what I'm going to choose to use for them topically, oftentimes the first thing they go to is, is it going to be hydroquinone? Because that's what we kind of often think of when we think of a skin lightening agent. Well, that comes with its own set of kind of conversation points. You know, is it safe to use? Is it mutagenic? Is it going to cause hypopigmentation, like you said, or any type of rebound or undesired hyperpigmentation? The difference with the cysteamine is, again, this is something that we naturally make, and it is affecting pigmentation, um, well, specifically melanogenesis or pigment production at lots of different points in its pathway, very different than other topicals. Um, so it's, remember we were talking about those two different forms of pigment, that eumelanin and pheomelanin, it's actually shifting and driving more pigment production towards that lighter melanin. So it's one way in which it's help, it's helping. It's also blocking, you know, a pre pigment production process that all the other ones do. So it's doing lots of different things. So it's become really, um, you know, a force to be reckoned with in terms of how many different issues of pigmentation I can address with it. Um, we talked about living here in South Florida. Big thing that I'm passionate about in doing my pro my practice is use energy based devices. So lasers, not so different than burning yourself, right? But it's just very controlled. So I can induce unintentionally hyperpigmentation. I don't want to in patients that are prone to pigment with an energy based device, um, and specifically individuals who are sun damaged to begin with. Those are the ones that want to come in, right, for a resurfacing laser they're even more likely to hyperpigment as a result of doing one of these treatments. 
So we pre-treat these patients. So assisting means become a way for us to set these patients and ourselves up for success um, when we do these procedures so that we don't run into those hiccups like hyperpigmentation. And then oftentimes we treat them afterwards as well. So it's kind of a way to skin prep as well. I love it. And so many patients want a one-time, you know, one treatment fix, but really they need a tailored approach based on what's actually driving that pigmentation. Oh, yeah. Now, bright, even skin tone is often marketed as an aesthetic goal, but is there more to it than that? And clinical evidence, yeah, clinical evidence suggests that an even skin tone is perceived as more youthful than wrinkle reduction alone. And that's according to a study by Dr. Fink in Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery Journal. So do all patients benefit from brightening or tone correction or are, are there patient populations that simply aren't focused on it? What that skin brightness is often reflecting is healthier skin. And, you know, what is healthier skin? What we know that, you know, your barrier function is great. Um, or I, you know, optimize that, you know, you have enough collagen and elastin in your tissue to provide for a good dermis and there's good light reflection. Like, why are all those things happening? So what you use on your skin and what you do in terms of treatments is going to reflect or result in that skin brightness. And, you know, if we were just talking about eucystamine, which has these different mechanisms. We talked about being an antioxidant. Well, we think about vitamin C, right? That's like the, the antioxidant we think of in terms of skin brightness, but it's not the only one. There are other, you know, antioxidants that can impact skin brightness. Um, and, you know, in a compound like the Cispera, which has the cystamine, but also has something called isobionic amide. That is a, another vitamin B3 version. So we think of niacinamide, nicotinamide being anti-inflammatory and antioxidants. This is yet another. And when we, you know, I always, I love listening to all of the longevity doctors. And I think most people listen to Peter Atia and different people who talk about you know, the different supplementations that are the buzzwords right now, NAD, um, glutathione. Well, compounds like this have the potential and they do mechanistically increase um, intracellular glutathione levels, which we know is uber important. And they also can play a role in increasing NAD levels. So we are making healthier skin, which in turn is going to look brighter. I love it. A roundabout way to get there, but yeah. Wow, that's that's such incredible information, and I'll tell you why. Because it just made me realize, and it was a question I always had, do I really need a product like Cyspera if I don't have any dark spots, melasma, hyperpigmentation? Will and can I just use it daily to brighten my appearance in general? So I love that you just re-anchored a whole new demographic of, hey, you could just have the better, brighter you version. You don't have to have all these issues and still use the product with no side effects, which I love, the no side effects. And it's interesting. Honestly, I think a lot of people underestimate how transformative, transformative even tone can be, especially when, when they've tried everything else, right? Yeah. Now, lastly, let's talk melasma, the ultimate skin mystery. Research, research shows it's more prevalent in hot climates exasperated by heat and visible light as much as, you know, UV, and it's notoriously stubborn. Yeah. Why, why is melasma so difficult to treat, especially when you look at places like Florida and South Florida? Again, geography, making it more persistent. Talk to me. It is a chronic and relapsing condition. And the reason for that, we don't entirely know, but we do know there's different components that play a role in, you know, its presence, if you will. Hormone fluctuations are the one I think most of us um, are most familiar with, you know, during pregnancy, post-pregnancy, perimenopause, menopause, you know, so what's happening during those times of these hormonal shifts, um, but also sun. We know sun is a huge component of melasma, but then, or, uh, it, you know, factor in terms of aggravating melasma or bringing it out. But then you have individuals who live in a climate like Alaska. Um, never seeing sunlight, yet their melasma is triggered um, by lifestyle. And so what would that lifestyle look like? Well, we under now understand that things like hot yoga or, you know, saunas, which 
cause vasodilation, that that vasodilation can actually be playing a role in aggravating those individuals' melasma. So it is multifactorial. It's hard to keep it away. And so one approach or one thing that I share with my patients in our approach to treating their melasma is you don't want to break the bank. If you know that this is something that can come back when you are having, you know, an unintended five minute conversation with a friend outside of Starbucks and you didn't have appropriate sunscreen or sun protection. And now all that hard work and money you just spent to treat your melasma is out the window because this stupid stuff comes right back. Try to find what's going to work for you that's not going to break the bank. And I say that because we have access to these great lasers and I love my lasers, but they are going to cost more in terms of your treatment investment um, often than the topicals will, right? Doing these creams or even the oral medications that we utilize now. So in my practice, it's usually going to be a combination of the three, but trying to make it so it doesn't feel like a financial burden for the patient. So I'll combine something like a Cispair and I use it according kind of to a protocol which it means that they use it every day at home. It's like this at-home mask that they're going to be doing and they feel like they're doing something, a treatment at home for about four months. And then they just maintain after that. That doesn't feel so burdensome twice a week. So every day they're doing it for 16 weeks. And then after that, they're just doing it twice a week. And then in addition to that, obviously their sunscreen, they've got to be using their sunscreen. And then we'll throw in there, depending upon their melasma, maybe oral tranexamic acid, which is off-label in this country to use it for that. But we do utilize, I use it in Europe all the time. And then some lasers. We use picosecond lasers to treat their melasma. Sometimes we use other devices as well. But, you know, it has to be that multi-pronged approach to getting, I think, great outcomes. Well, this is great information. You're helping a lot of people stay educated and make the right choices in the dermatology office. And I love that. Melasma is really the diva. <clears throat> excuse me, it's really the diva of pigment disorders, hard to predict, harder to treat. So this adds a lot of clarity to why even diligent pace, patients struggle with it. Thank you for, for that insight. Well, we are officially at the end of our date, my friend. I can't, thank you enough, I can't thank you enough for coming on and being our expert on the microphone today and really educating us and helping us make those clear, brighter choices for the summertime when it comes to our skincare. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you for having me. That was the Better, Brighter You segment brought to you by Cispera. And that was the amazing Dr. Leslie Clark Loser. Definitely check her out at precisionskininstitute.com and follow her on the gram at Clark Loser. And you can also check them out at Precision Skin Institute. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Cispera. If skin discoloration is making it hard to find your zen, Cispera can help. Stubborn pigmentation, dark spots, and uneven skin tone concerns go beyond the surface, affecting both confidence and self-expression. In a sea of skincare choices, Cispera stands apart. Backed by science and trusted by dermatologists worldwide, Cispera is powered by the advanced cystamine isobonic amide complex, delivering clinically proven results and effectively targeting mild to persistent discoloration while restoring the skin's natural glow. Unlike harsh treatments, Cispera is formulated for all skin types, including sensitive areas, ensuring visible improvements without irritation. Whether pigmentation is a new concern or a long-standing struggle, Cispera works in harmony with the skin to bring balance, clarity, and renewed confidence. Cispera is science-driven skin care for confidence that shines. Find your skin zen and restore your glow with Cispera today by heading to cispera.com. 